What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create. And today guys, we are going to be fully automating our ore processing setup, which we started working on last episode. So if you missed that one, we did set up the crushing wheels and we got the rotational power going, which is behind them right now. So these are actually functioning perfectly. If we were to flick the redstone on, they would start spinning. We could throw ore in the top and we would get the crushed ore out the bottom. And that's great because if you've been following the series, you would know that since episode one, my goal is to set up the crushing wheels and actually get ore processing going. And technically we have that right now, but as a modded Minecraft player, and I'm sure you can all understand this, it is unacceptable to have an ore processing setup that is not fully automated. With the frequency that you end up using it and the amount of stuff that you're putting into it, it makes your life so much easier to have it fully automated. And so anytime that is possible in modded Minecraft, we obviously have to do it. And so that's what we're gonna be fixing today because that is clearly a massive problem. And so we're gonna be automating both the crushing wheels turning on and off, which really doesn't relate to the ore processing itself. But if you noticed a couple episodes ago when we were fiddling around with stuff, I mentioned that the crushing wheels themselves seem to cause FPS drops for me when they were running, which is very weird because it's never happened in any other world that I've been in, but only this one. And so because we of course are recording videos in this world and I really don't wanna have any stuttering of any kind, uh, I don't want to have that being an issue. And so we're going to turn them off when they're not in use and fully automate it that way. And then we are also going to use this new area down here, which, I mean, I think it looks kind of nice. It's really nothing too complicated, but I wanted to have glass on the roof. I guess the, the floor if we're outside and the roof if we're in here. Um, but I wanted to have glass there so that we could see everything going on because it actually does look pretty cool. But this is where the actual processing of the crushed ore that we're getting from the crushing wheels is going to occur. And it's a relatively small area, and a lot of this is actually not going to be used. But we're coming down here because we're, one, going to have to use lava for this setup. There's really no way around that for automating this. So uh, we're going to be doing that. And so I wanted to prevent the house from being lit on fire. And also, it's a pretty compact setup, so it can pretty much be taken care of in this maybe 3x3 three three area, not including some of the chests that we're going to be storing stuff in. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of different things that are going to go into this setup today, and they're not big things, they're really small things, but they're all very important to it. So we should probably jump into it because we got to craft a couple different things that we haven't used before, a couple things we have used before too that we're going to be doubling up on. Um, but the first thing that we need to go over is using a magma block. So some of you recommended that I use different things for the encased fans that will actually not threaten a fire when it comes to having a wood house. And one of those is a magma block, which apparently works perfectly fine with the encased fans. So I went and I got one of these and for today's encased fan that we're gonna be using, we're gonna use a magma block. So thank you for the recommendation on that one. Um, but the main components of this are going to be uh, the encased fan and we're gonna be using two of those. So we'll actually grab out everything in here. This includes both the redstone that we're gonna be using for the upper portion automation uh, that you probably don't need if you don't suffer from FPS losses, but it's also gonna cover the automation that's gonna be going on underground. So uh, we also need shafts, which are over here. So we're gonna make two encased fans because one of these is going to be generating us rotational power using the magma block. The other one is going to pretty much be connected directly to that, which is going to be generating us actual blowing of air. I don't know what you'd call it. It's going to blow air. Um, and so it's gonna be kind of funny, but we're gonna be using an encased fan directly next to an encased fan to power it. Uh, and that is because to actually cook stuff down, you can put an encased fan next to lava and here's my lava bucket, uh, and you can blow the lava across an item and that is going to cook it down over time. And you can also do that by washing things with water, it's the same premise, so we're gonna be doing that. Um, and then on top of that, we are also going to have a couple different things here too. We'll go to the create page. So we are going to need uh, the transposer, so we're gonna be making a funnel and an extractor, and then we're also gonna need a funnel on its own, and this is gonna go into the collecting and sorting of the items that we're getting out of this, because the main premise is that we don't want anything that hasn't been cooked down yet to go into our chest, and this is how we're gonna keep it so compact. So, to make the funnel, we have an electron tube, two dried kelp, two brass sheets, and two planks of any kind, and that makes us four funnels. So that's great because we need one regular one and then one for making the transposer. To make this, we also need an extractor, which we're not gonna use on its own, but of course we need it for the crafting. And then we're gonna make the transposer. 
So we're going to go over what those actually do in a bit here. We're going to be hooking them up to some chests and that's actually pretty much all we need to craft other than having a filter. So we're going to be making this because we need to filter out, like I said, uh, all the different ingots that we want to go into our chest. And so we're going to come over here, I should say over here, and I actually have them all sorted out. So we've got iron ore for testing, and then we've got a copper ingot, a gold ingot, an iron ingot, and a zinc bar. But then we also need stone too, because the byproduct of pretty much all of these is going to be cobblestone, which it will get cooked down, which is great because we use stone with building this house a ton, but we also need to remember that that needs to be filtered and sorted too. So we're gonna grab all of these out just to make it easier when we actually go to set up the filter. And I believe we pretty much should have everything. Uh, I think we need one gearbox and that should be it. And that's just gonna be for uh, turning the rotational force perpendicular to the first encased fan to get the second one in a horizontal manner rather than vertical. So we'll do the redstone later, I think. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is start setting up, uh, and I actually, you know what, now that I think about it, we are going to need one other thing. Okay guys, so I grabbed everything else we needed. It actually wasn't anything super relevant to the automation itself, but it was stuff that we need to make it look nice when we're down here. So uh, I grabbed that off camera just so you wouldn't have to watch me do some crafting on camera of miscellaneous things, but now we should be good to go. So the main premise of all of this is that the ore is going to go in from a hopper above the crushing wheels up there, and it is going to drop as crushed ore and cobblestone directly down this chute right here. So it's going to land right here. And what we need to have then is the encased fans blowing the lava across it. So we want the lava to be most likely right here. And that's because we can't have it right here because we need to hold the lava in place. And one of the things I got was some smooth stone slabs. And so we're going to hold the lava in place by putting one down right like this. And we can actually, if we want to open this up more uh, to do some work, come over here. But something to know is that by putting down a slab right here, this actually does not block the airflow, as you might call it, um, from being blown across the items that are right here, which seems kind of weird just because if you put down an actual block, it will stop it. Um, so this is important just because it's how you're gonna hold the lava in place so it doesn't spill out into your room. So the lava is gonna go right here, which means the encased fan is gonna go right here. And look at that, we found some iron ore. Well, we'll collect that. Hopefully it's not too much area to fill in down here. I think I have cobblestone on me. Um, but then we are going to be setting up the magma block encased fan setup. So we will grab out the first encased fan. We might need our wrench here, but we're gonna put the encased fan right here and it's gonna be blowing the lava this way. So we want it just like that. Then we need to get behind this and the second encased fan is gonna be going technically right here but we need it to be facing down. So we're gonna hop down here and just to make this a little bit easier, we'll get some cobble out to work with. So we'll put it like that. And we should have the rotation coming out the top, awesome. And then we can put the magma block down here directly below it, which is great. And then it's occurring to me now that another thing I forgot is a lever because I always forget that you need levers to be able to turn on the encased fans. And we should have a couple extra. Well, I guess we have one extra right over here. So we can slap that down just to make sure everything is good to go. So we can put that over here. And you can see we got our rotational power coming up there. And then we'll throw down a gearbox right like that, which will start this encased fan. It looks like it's actually sucking air in, which is not what we want. Okay, guys, so I took care of the issue. Um, this one was a little bit annoying because I actually have not always had to deal with this issue, but to fix this issue, as we saw, the fan initially was sucking air in, and that actually is because based on the way the rotation is occurring, it can actually blow air or suck it back in. So you can pull items to you or push them away. And of course, when we're working with the lava today, we want the lava to be blown across the item, so it needs to be blowing things away from it. Now, of course, that's a problem. So all I had to do was move it back one, 
and we just used another gearbox to inverse the rotation. So now it's blowing it away. So nothing else really changed. Now we just have, and I'll dig down here, we have our encased fan down here, which is coming up and then having its rotation inverted. So uh, we can now fill this area in over here and we'll put down the smooth stone again once we get this filled in just to make it look nice. And we can put the lava down over here too. I'll start filling this in so we can put the lava down without it having to worry about spilling out. And there we go. So you can see now immediately, if you have particles on, that you are now getting not just regular air being blown across, but you are getting the actual lava being blown across. And if I were to step in here, I would get hurt. So you can see I actually get lit on fire. And so you definitely want to make sure that you don't step in this path. It actually might be worth blocking uh, the ability to step in that path so you don't do that uh, accidentally. So I may end up doing that. Um, but you know, really just don't step in front of it. Uh, and what we can do then is take one of our chests and we should be able to put the chest down right over here. And we should be able to then take the funnel and this is going to attach to the chest and put it down like that. Now we may have to move the chest back one. I'm not positive that this is gonna function properly right like this. And the reason I say that is just because uh, our goal here is to have the items fall down here and they may get caught on top of this funnel. I don't know if the funnel itself actually has, uh, I don't know, you call it like a hitbox of some sort. Um, so let's see. No, it looks like it gets sucked directly in. Um, and that's what the funnel does. When items get pushed into it, it pulls them in and puts them in a chest with the ability to put a filter on it. So uh, I think this should be fine. We'll be able to test it later. And if we need to, we can just move it back one. But the idea here is that we are going to put a filter on that is going to allow us to prevent anything that's not the ore from being brought in here that's cooked down. So if we open up the filter by right clicking with it in our hand, you can set a couple different settings on this. You can blacklist or whitelist. Um, you can ignore data, respect the data, and then you can say that you're good to go. And so for this, we're gonna put the copper ingot, the gold ingot, the iron ingot, the zinc bar, and the smooth stone, or the regular stone, it's not smooth stone, the regular stone in there, and we are gonna say it's good to go. Then we're gonna click it on the filter, and there we go. So now if we were to throw something down in front of this, like say the cobblestone, it's going to sit there. You can actually see you get a particle effect while it's cooking down. And the minute it finishes, it should get sucked in here, which is exactly what we want. So the goal is that the crushed ore will drop down. It will get pushed right up against this funnel, but it won't be able to go through until the exact time that the lava finishes smelting it down into the ingot, and then it'll go in. And that's good because um, from what I have seen, Items that do not need to get cooked down that sit in this lava will eventually be destroyed. So you do not want stuff to be sitting in there for an extended period of time. Now, a lot of people will use a belt system that carries things in front of lava, but that requires uh, it to be in front of lava for a significant period of time, which means the belt system is either going extremely slowly or you're going to have to have five or six different blocks of lava all being blown across it. Um, as it goes across the belt. And so that's really not what I wanted to do. This makes it extremely compact. And so all the items are gonna end up in here. The one thing I wanted to do to keep it nice and tidy is I wanted to pull the cobblestone or the stone after it's cooked down out. And so we're gonna set up another chest right here and we are going to put this transposer between the two. And so this is what it looks like and we have the ability to add another filter on here. And what we're actually gonna do is we're not gonna use a filter, we're just gonna click the stone itself in there. So right now, only stone should go in there. So if we were to throw an iron ingot in there, or any of these, nothing will happen, nothing goes in there. But if we were to throw this stone in there, it will get pulled out and put in here, which is great because we're gonna get a lot of stone and I'd like to keep them separated. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, but in my personal preference, I'd like to keep them sorted and maybe eventually we'll sort out everything into its own individual areas, uh, since there's really only four things that can go in here. Uh, so if we come upstairs, now what we need to do is get the wheels themselves automated. So we're going to take a hopper and we are going to put it 
right on top of these. So you can actually just click it down right there. It looks a little bit weird, but this will actually work. Uh, and then we're gonna come behind it and this is where we are going to start automating these. So we wanna get rid of these levers because these of course do need a redstone signal to function. And the way we're gonna make this work is by using some redstone repeaters and redstone comparators. And so we are going to run a system right from back there. We're gonna put our comparator down first so it'll know if anything is in there. Then we're gonna put a repeater down because it's gonna have at times a very, very weak signal at the very end of it. And we'll just set that to three. And then we're pretty much just gonna run regular redstone down and then put repeaters into these. So we're gonna run it down like this and we're gonna put repeaters down to push right into these. So this actually should function fine now. That should be all we need to do for the automation. And if we put in iron ore, it should drop it out. Everything drops down. As you can see down there, it should start getting cooked and the minute it turns, it's going to go into our chest. And once this runs out, it should finish the last one and it will stop pretty much with this redstone setup. It will stop the split second it finishes it, which is great. So if we come downstairs now, you can see that everything is done. We have 29 iron ingots, which means we got 28 from, was it the 17 we put in there, which is not too bad. And we got three stone. So not too much additional byproduct, but everything cooked down, which is great. And if we wanted to now, we could put something like glass down or something to prevent us from being stupid and walking in front of that. But I think it's fine for the time being. Uh, I actually really like the way this looks. I think it looks really cool. And from what I have seen, this is pretty much the most compact way to do it, considering you pretty much only want the stuff to sit on one block uh, while it's being cooked down from where it drops. So uh, I would say to go along with this setup, but the belt setups definitely are really cool to watch. I think those tend to be a little bit more visually appealing if you're going for a full factory feel, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It prevents us from getting any of the lag with the redstone automation, which works perfectly and it keeps it pretty compact down there and we have some pretty cool looking stuff. So I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you guys have been enjoying the summer weather outside. If you're living somewhere where it's warm out now, I am finally, it's actually been a little bit too warm for me um, and staying happy and healthy during all of this and safe. Um, and yeah, some of you are on summer break now also. I hope you're enjoying that. But like I said, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you later. Sleep.